Okay, and we are live, I believe. Okay, fantastic. Uh, this is Wes Stace with uh, Flat Earth News Talk. And today we have another episode with uh, Mark Sargent. This is episode four. Uh, sorry, I apologize to everybody out there. I have not been able to do any shows for quite some time till I got a new computer. Uh, it's not the greatest computer, but it seems to be working fairly decent. And we are going to be talking to Mark Sargent, uh, second interview. Uh, how are you doing today, Mark? Good. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Great, great. You've been uh, having a lot of things going on lately uh, from the last time that I had talked to you on uh, TS TFR. Um, one is uh, the debate that you had. Uh, well, if you want to call it a debate, and the other is uh, your new book uh, that uh, I get. Uh, was it somebody over in uh, uh, was it in London? Uh, I don't even remember where it was. Uh, it was in yeah, the Google's, UK, Google's publishing out of uh, London. They were the ones that uh, they contacted me and they said, "Yeah, we'd like to to take the flat Earth clues and make it into a book form." And I said, sure. I mean, I've gotten calls like that before, but you, you take it with a grain of salt and it's like, okay, maybe it'll pan out. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, ta-da, book, Flat Earth Clues. Awesome. Um, you get it. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, it's on Amazon. And uh, yes, this is actually the first thing I'm actually making money on in the Flat Earth. Uh, but it was, I'm, I'm very grateful they did it. I didn't solicit them. They, they approached me, which was great. And who, who am I to, you know, I didn't even really have to do much cause I had all the transcripts, uh, and all the text for it, except for the intro and some of the Q and a. So it turned out great and, and yeah, very, very happy about it so far. So they actually, uh, they, they did follow pretty much everything that was in your flat clues. I'm assuming that you had read it and, uh, yeah, yeah, it. they, they did uh, all the all the clues one through twelve. Uh, they the there was an editor did an intro. Um, uh, they did the transcript from the Admiral Byrd interview, and then we did a big Q and A at the end. Uh, and it's, it's good. The again, really surprised, and and all the illustrations were done by them uh, by a children's author. Go figure, because you got to get them hook them while you're young. Uh, it's probably the most non-threatening cover I've ever seen in my life, you know, uh, as far as, because when you look at it, it kind of looks like a parody, like it's a metaphor for something. Flat Earth Clues, you know, with this cartoon guy holding a magnifying glass, a cartoon detective over a flat earth, and you don't even know what you're looking at. So, and you know, it's a short read, not very, not very big. And uh, I'm sure I'm going to get the same reaction with the book as I did with the clues. People are going to read it, and by the time they get to the end, they'll be like, wait, what did I just read? And then they'll read it again. Then it'll sink in, and since my phone number and all my information is on the back, I'm sure I'll get phone calls. So we'll we'll have to see how it goes. Yeah, and I like that. It kind of looks like a kids' book. That is, that is yeah. Cool. Well, I, yeah. It's there's no accident there. The illustrator literally was a children's illustrator, and uh, she did a fantastic job. I thought again, it's there's no there's no menacing feel to it at all, which I really didn't want anyway with the. Uh, you know, cause most conspiracies are doom and gloom and, and oh, it's so horrible. The sky is falling. Uh, and in this case, it was neat, you know, cause the, like, for example, the, the title is called, uh, flat earth clues, the sky's the limit, which is down below. And it's interesting because the flat earth has really changed that saying because before the sky was the limit, but it's a weird saying because there is no limit, right? The sky is like the sky, you know, you can just go on, but now the sky's the limit takes on a whole new facet. And uh, so I'm, I'm tickled and, and, you know, the audio version just came out a couple days ago and uh, on audibles and uh, it's from what I understand, it's going to be translated into a couple other languages, French and Spanish and it's great. Super hope, hope one day. My ultimate goal is that, is that somebody in the science community, um, notably Neil deGrasse Tyson will hold this up on television and, and call it out and say, this is the most dangerous book in America right now. You know, and so I, that, that's my goal that he would actually say that if he does that, I can die a happy man. Yeah. Then you, then your, 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 your whole work is done. Right yeah. Then and there. Huh? Yeah. I could be a hip. Uh, that's it. That's I, I'm not going to be able to get much higher than that. So, uh, yeah. Close very, up shop, go back to the video plan. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, it's really cool. When I got a, um, oh, by the way, how much does the uh, book cost? Uh, that's a great question. I on Amazon, I think it's like twelve ninety nine, maybe. I can't remember offhand. I'd have to look it up again because yeah, I left it all up to the publisher. I really didn't even care. I didn't even look at because uh, it just came out um, oof, March first, or I think it came on Le came out technically on Leap Day, which was February twenty ninth. And uh, and the publisher had took took care of all that, so I just said, you know, I just just run with it. I I do not know all the details of it, other than you know, it's it's my clues, but uh, it's not very much. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's a um, flat earther that just came out not too long ago. Uh, her name is um, uh, J L Forbes. I don't know if you have checked her out. I'm I sure I do know who J L Forbes is. Yeah, I like her. Yeah, so do I. And uh, she just got done doing a couple children's books. And she actually, I don't know if you caught one of her videos where she actually reads the whole thing um, on, on video, which is kind of cool. And I got into it. She kind of uh, is throwing the flat plane thing in, which is kind of cool. Uh, but she also wraps it up with aliens from another planet and, and whatever. But it, it was kind of cool. So I did get a hold of her the other day, and um, I'm just waiting for her response because I told her that I'd like to do an interview with her when I get my new computer, and then a couple days later, I got it, and uh, she responded to me, and I tried to send an email, and the email came back. Google said that it, something was wrong with the email, so, hmm. or her email address. So right. I just basically copied my email and threw it into a message on her um, YouTube. So I'm hoping I'll hear back from her somewhat soon because my plan was to get her on and I was going to secretly have you and Patricia pop in while we were doing the show. Uh, uh, I think that would have tickled her pink. Got it. God, that would have been fun. So uh, who knows? Maybe, you know, we'll see if that happens. But yeah, she's great. I like her videos. And uh, I like the collaborations she's done so far. So it's been a lot of fun to watch her. Yeah, definitely it is. Uh, I just watched her last one. She had a couple of gals um, on each side of her who were yep. into the flat earth. And they did, I don't know, a good yep. 35, 40 minutes of uh, uh, just chit-chatting yeah. about yeah. flat earth. It was pretty yeah. cool. Groups are forming. <laughs> I really yeah. like... Go ahead. Yeah, I really like her... Uh, her her no balls uh, style. That's what I like about her. Yeah. I mean, she's kind of like out there in your face. Um, yeah. Other thing, um, your uh, your debate um, <laughs> that was kind of quite the show uh, with uh, what was his name, David? Um, there were two guys that we went up against. It initially, was supposed to be. Uh, Richard Hoagland and Mark D'Antonio versus David Weiss and myself. It was supposed to be a two-on-two -two where the both of us were going to be kind of all in the same room. And this was on Dark 30 Radio. And Richard Hoagland never, you know, he can he never called in to to cancel, and which wasn't surprising because if he looked into this even for a few minutes, he'd realize he was in trouble. So he never called in. And so they were kind of in trouble because they, then they only had, then it was two on one. That was David and I versus Mark D'Antonio. And so what they did was they decided to do a tag team style where I was going to go up against D'Antonio first. And while they were, while they were scrambling behind the scenes, trying to get a second guest. And I went up against D'Antonio. And of course, like I knew it was going to happen because it, it's how it's happened before with other people. He hadn't done his homework. He didn't believe that it was it was real. Everyone goes into that denial stage first, which is well, flat Earth isn't isn't possible. It cannot it cannot possibly be real. So he and he didn't even bother doing it from his hotel room. He bought he did it from you know down at the convention. He was at a MUFON convention, and he did it down in a in a I don't know if it was a bar or a lounge or something. And there were people around him. His peers were around him. And they started getting belligerent right off the bat. It's like, you know, just laughing and, and saying this is a joke and I was an idiot and all that stuff. So I got a little upset and uh, I figured, all right, I'm just not going to give him any quarter. I'm just going to go straight at him and, and see what happens. 
and it worked. I mean, he quit in 20 minutes. It was over that that fast. In fact, he waited literally until the first break, and then uh, I've got the recordings on my side. He just bailed. That was it. He couldn't take it anymore. And I have no sympathy for him whatsoever because if it's one thing if you mock the message, but don't mock the messenger. And uh, it was uh, so then so then while they were doing that, so that guy leaves. So now they're desperate. So they bring in a guy named Brian Dunning. Now, Brian Dunning and I got along famously. You know, we, we, uh, we were both low key and civil and you could tell we were, we were sort of on the same page. Uh, and we got to this one part where it was very, very interesting because I haven't heard a, a, an academic say this before, which was that I asked him, I go, because this is a question I'm going to be posing to other scientists out there eventually if they can get past the outrage Part, part stage which is um uh if you had to take the average man on the street and at, pull them aside and say and, and prove to them that it was a globe how would you do it you know if you had to take the average man you know not not the academic community how would you how would you take the average man on the street and do that too and he said sorry about that and he said, uh, you know, I don't think I could. He goes, short of giving the person $20 million and putting him in a rocket, sending him into space, I don't think I could do it. And I thought that was a, a wonderful admission, which was that science has no way of proving the globe on the ground, which is, you know, other than, I mean, yeah, you can go into geometry and trigonometry and all that, but it's not going to do the average person any good because most people are not up on trigonometry and geometry or really any advanced math. That's just not what they're about. And do so the space. So it's still he was basically putting everything back in the space program again. And I said, okay, there's you, know, you wonder why we hit NASA so hard. You wonder why we hit the space program so hard. That is why. It's because the uh, you're putting the the burden of proof on space, and I thought it was a great great admission, and I'm so glad he said it. And I was hoping actually eventually that I would run into him again down the road, you know, and 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 do another debate with him. But then I find out right afterwards that uh, it turns out the guy I was talking to <laughs> had had just just gotten out of prison at the end of 2015 for fraud. And it wasn't minor fraud either. He had he was a uh, he had run a business that was partnered with uh, eBay, one of eBay's partners back in, you know years ago, and had stolen a bunch of money from eBay. And it took them six years worth of litigation before he finally went to prison. And so he's still on probation now. So of course he was going to do the interview because most academics won't because they've got something to lose. You know, if you're a some of the masters or a PhD. The last thing you're going to do is be the guy that loses to a flat in a flat Earth debate. But in case of Brian Dunning, he had nothing to lose, so it was already. So the point was, he ran a debunker site that would would try to accuse people, you know, catch people in in the act of fraud, you know, from you know of different of different conspiracies. And here he was, uh, actually had done prison time for fraud, which most conspiracy guys never even did. Anyway, the point is I'm never going to be able to do a debate with him because his credibility just went just went off the edge. And so <laughs> that's where we are now. Uh, but that it yeah, also yeah. It, it shows you how bad a state we are in when it's trying to find somebody to debate. Um, you know, Richard Hoagland, I wouldn't necessarily consider him a, a high-end academic. He couldn't do it because his theory absolutely does not match up. He was one of the few guys I singled out and said that, you can't his the flatter theory does fine with just about every other conspiracy except for Richard Hoagland's because Richard Hoagland's talks about you know bases on Mars and there's people living on the moon and there's all these millions of people out there on different on different planets and here we are saying yeah there's no planets to actually put people on so what the heck are you talking about and uh, so yeah he bailed and, and never called in and when i talked to the radio station i felt bad because i i i said do you realize the guy you brought in to talk to me at the end he's uh convicted you know he was convicted of fraud and they go yeah we knew uh, but we were desperate so we had to bring in somebody otherwise the 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 debate would have never even happened it's like oh so that's yeah. uh that, that's where we are and i thought it, it was, again i thought it went i'm sorry go ahead yeah, when it when I was listening to it, 
and and you were getting really upset i'm like oh don't lose your cool mark cool down but i totally understood why you just kind of went off because it was I was getting pissed off as my as myself. Yeah. I wasn't even a part of it. But yeah, I, yeah, I hear you on that one. There's, I'm glad that Duh, um, the Brian, other guy at yeah. least was corrigible to you. Yeah, yeah. He he was he was really great. The uh, the thing that I'm trying to get people to understand because as uh, you know, everyone gets in a debate. A debate is a natural process of of talking to anybody about this, and that is. Come back at people with this because the the you're going to get these knee jerk reactions, and all these knee jerk reactions have nothing to do with the debate process, which is um, name name calling isn't a rebuttal, uh, profanity isn't a rebuttal, uh, yelling isn't a rebuttal. None of these things, I, I, you know, the only thing that's a rebuttal is actually a rebuttal. Make some points. Calling me an idiot, swearing at me, or just raising your voice to the point where you, you're just shouting in the room has nothing to do with discussing this topic at all. But yet quite a few people do it, and it's the only thing they can turn to. And they don't even, I, I think a lot of people don't even realize they're doing it. Um, there's a pastor out there. I can't remember his name. He's got, I don't know, pushing 50,000 followers. And he's just up at the pulpit, just yelling, you know, because he can't swear. And, he, and he's just yelling wow. and, uh, uh, and, and, and calling people idiots and saying that's the dumbest thing in the world, but he won't bring up any points. And I don't even, I don't think he even knows why he's yelling. Uh, you know, he, there's, but I'm, I'm right into that in a lot of the religious sector, not just Christianity, where they're saying that because people are so consumed with this flat earth idea that that uh, the the congregation leaders think it's a distraction from the pulpit. Basically, all the messages they were planning on talking about, nobody wants to hear anymore. All people want to talk about is like, especially in the biblical sector, is let's talk about flat earth. Do us do a do a seminar, do a ministry on flat earth. And they don't know what to do when is they, they don't know how to handle that. So they're they're trying to right. tell you like they they're trying to downplay it and say this shouldn't be consuming you from the rest of the Bible. You shouldn't be just looking in the Bible at the flat Earth parts of it. You should be looking. At, and my argument is, hey, at least they're looking. You know, how many of the congregation was actually spending time in the Bible? I mean, yes, yeah, some people are, but this is this has brought more people back to spirituality than anything I've ever seen. So uh, don't. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Is my uh my I know that's not necessarily a, is that a biblical thing? I don't know, might be, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm running into that more and more. Oh. So anyway, the point is name calling, uh, swearing and yelling. None of these things have anything to do with a real argument. Uh, you, you, you it's just that's just the the preface. You, once you get out that those out of the way, once you're done yelling and and calling me, calling me names or whoever's names then uh, what, uh, what, what points do you have to make? Because that's what everyone else wants to hear, and that's when they usually will slow down and, and adjust to it. Right, exactly. Well, you ain't going to believe this, and I, I don't believe this right now. Um, I did not, when I, when I do my shows, I do not uh, advertise to my fans. I don't send out anything. Yeah. Uh, I don't schedule it. I just, you know, as you know, you came in, we talked yeah. for a little bit, and then I hit the start button. Um, we already got eight views uh, and 17 likes. I'm like, Yay. okay, now I'm thinking I might want to turn on the Q&A. <laughs> Maybe we can get somebody to go ahead sure. and uh, Sure, go ahead. I, I, uh, have some people ask some questions. Sure, I don't care. That's fine. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's what I'm going to – I'm just trying to figure out where my Q&A is. I think it's um, – uh, showcase. Uh, let's see. Is that a chat? Okay, there. But that's just chat for us, isn't it? Uh, not necessarily. Depends where you are. Um, you see anybody else in there besides us in chat? Did anybody else join? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to find out. Is which one? Unfortunately, um, I don't initiate. I don't think I've ever yeah, initiated. Yeah, I don't know enough about uh, Google Hangouts, on um, because I think when I was setting it up, I had to click on, 
I had clicked on something that said uh, engage uh, Q&A. Oh, wait, no, wait. What do we got here? I think I found it. Yep, Q&A. All right. Click on that. Okay. And it's, I think it's now on. Cool. Okay. So if anybody out there has uh, any questions for Mark, uh, please go ahead and uh, chime in. That would be cool. I would like that. That'd be neat. Could be um, jumping in, kind of doing doing a Patricia Steer show. Of course, <laughs> I don't have the hair for it. Yeah, I was about to say you got to have a lot of red hair for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I was gonna uh, touch on one of my theories. I had talked to you earlier about on uh, <clears throat> TFR about um, uh, the sun. Uh, being always the same size in the winter versus the summer, and if we're supposed to be farther away from the sun on the uh, globe model, how is that possible that the sun looks like it's the same same size in the sky? And as well as uh, the winter, um, and I came up with an idea that during the summer that the cold uh, Antarctic uh, wind is blowing around the outer edge and keeps doing this all winter long or all summer long and On the inside when the Sun the Sun is much higher in the sky going around circling around Because I think if it was any lower we'd be all fried and then as it goes out towards the outer rim It starts to go down and as it goes down out to the outer rim, the uh, hot air pushes down the cold air the cold air comes flying inward and that's how we get our our winners. And I was just wondering what your thoughts were on that. I hadn't really given that one much thought. <laughs> so, but it's it's a it's a cool idea. No play on words there because the the cold wind. But it's um, it's neat. Uh, I I hadn't. You know me. I don't I don't hate really any ideas because when it comes to the model, if everything's in flux now anyway. So you know we're still still people are trying to put out you know a better map, and uh, you know one person went crazy trying to do it. Tried to do it, which was Tiger Dan. So we'll have to see. But no, nah, I don't I don't hate it. Sure. I mean you know the you I, what I always thought was cool, and I don't know if you watched it was the uh, the Rob Skiba thing. I think he was the first one to do it when you could look at the global weather system and then put it on an AE map and watch everything swirl around on the, uh, you know, everything from the cloud formations to the jet stream. Everything looks so much more efficient on uh, an AE map, you know, on a circular map than a, than, a, than a spherical model. I love it. So, yeah, not bad. Yeah, when I, when I was listening to you and Rob the other day, uh, that's the first person I thought of getting a hold of because he does these type of uh, models and, and puts them into a um, uh, workable um, CGI model. And it's like, I need to get a hold of him to throw that out and see if he can work it. Because I know nothing about making that type of a 3D model uh, that actually you can look at and go, ah, oh, okay, I get it now. Um, but I think I, I need to talk to him about that because I know he was talking about the sun, and he's working on it, trying to figure it out. And I think I got to throw that out at him. And Rob, if you're, you know, you know, listening, definitely go ahead and get a hold of me. Um, but yeah, I think he might be able to be the one to put that in a 3D model a lot better than me. Maybe, maybe. Um, you know, there was one thing I was going to mention since you got we're we're actually going out live, right? Are we? We're yet we're actually on YouTube right now. Yep. Okay. There was a kind of a public service announcement I wanted to mention real fast, which was uh, there was a guy. Yeah. Let me go to the pastor one second. So the pastor's the the pastor in question, the guy that's yelling a lot, that's going after flat Earth. His name is uh, his pastor uh, channel is S Anderson sixteen eleven. So it's S A N D R S O N sixteen eleven, but that's not guy I want to mention. I mean, yeah, he's got forty thousand followers, and he's a, a strong Christian, but he does not believe in in Bible literacy. He he thinks that, or at least disagrees. 
he thinks that the the Bible teaches that uh, the the world is a sphere. But there was a guy. What the reason why I mentioned this is there's a guy in here, and I'm trying to find him real quick. Bear with me for a second. I don't want to lose him because I want to call him out. I don't usually call a lot of people. I don't say a lot of negative things. And this one isn't be as negative as it's sort of a people should be on the on the on the watch for this guy. Oh man, this guy's gotten so many comments already. Come on. Give me a second. Feel free to chime in with any uh any other theory you want to talk about while I'm looking this guy up. Uh, I'm really hoping right now at the moment, Mark, the I'm way? really hoping that as this is streaming on to YouTube, yeah. that uh both of us are coming through crystal clear. Uh because I know on my end it's just kind of like bits and pieces and that I'm catching it all, but um I'm really hoping that it's coming out perfectly for youtube well you can you can ask in chat or in q a you can say look is everyone is it are people hearing us okay or is uh your machine cutting out the uh the throughput that i don't know um either way i'm going to try yeah. to let me try to get this message out so you can sort of hear me when i'm talking but sometimes i break up well uh, I don't know how I'm coming through on your end. I can hear I can hear every word you say. Coming through okay for you, right? Yeah, yeah, I can hear every word you say. Your video is a little choppy, but that's just frame rate, so it's not it's not yeah. a huge deal. Um, so let me mention this real quick because I I've got to get this out there. I'll mention this on hot potatoes if I can do it two days early, it'd be great. Which is you get the exclusive in this case. Um, there's a guy out there who is putting you know you know who who Kent Hovind is the the religious uh, yeah the, the yeah, he, he's he, he claims to be a Bible literalist but he's not on the flat Earth theory yet so he's on the same thing with S Anderson. There's a guy out there who is going around the flat Earth community and he's claiming to be Kent Hovind's assistant. It's part of the congregation basically. And his uh, YouTube handle, he doesn't have very many followers, and his, his YouTube handle is Edric Visser. And his first name is spelled really interesting, but you guys can look this up if you want. It's E-D-R-I-Q-U-E-V-I-S-S-E-R. -S -S -E so Edric space Visser. And he contacted me, and he was not shy about saying that, yeah, he's just gotten open doors because he's pretending to be, if I'm not mistaken, he says that, that he's really tied to the Kent Hovind ministry and that Kent Hovind has been sort of looking into the flat earth, putting any dedicated him to go on a fact-finding mission to see if it was real. But here's the thing. He's not a, he's not what he claims to be because he goes on this channel with this pastor and he writes this comment, right? He goes, I love your videos on the Flat Earth, brother. I have been posting videos on the Flat Earth to stop this stupid movement, if we can call it that. So what I think he actually is is an anti-Flat Earther who is using Kent Hovind's name to talk to everybody in the Flat Earth movement and maybe find a weak spot that, that can be exploited. Um, unfortunately, the, the guy doesn't get that there are no weak spots in the, in the, in the movement. I mean, everybody knows what, what the points are, uh, but he's using, I mean, talk about your bad karma. He's using Kent Hovind's name to get, to get his foot in the door and, and talking to people. And he, he's going, oh yeah, people are happy to talk. They, they always return my calls when I say that I'm Kent Hovind's assistant. And it didn't, you know, I'll give people the benefit of the doubt, but with comments like this, it's like, okay, at the very least, you're not being neutral about this and you hate the movement. And, you know, it's, so anyway, just be, be wary, anybody in the flat earth movement that might be listening to this. If you get a call from somebody that says he's in the Kent Hovind camp, uh, do not do not entertain it. I mean, honestly, unless you get a call from Kent himself, just treat it like it's it's fake. Even, I'll give the guy points for being clever. That uh, you know, because that was one thing people would answer that call if you said, but it wouldn't be no different. Because how, who else could I compare this to? Uh, it'd be like if somebody, if um, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson's assistant. You know, a production matter or his agent called you. I mean, yeah, well, I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson's agent. I'd like to talk to you about the flat earth. A lot of people are going to return that call. Uh, but this guy screwed it up for anybody in the future because now everyone's going to be suspicious about everybody else. Anyway, just thought I'd put it out there. I'm going to repeat it again on Monday to whoever's uh, listening to the Hot Potato Show. But 
just wanted to let people know. Oh, here's something for uh, <clears throat> Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm going to explain gravity to you, dude. All right, see that? Weight and density. <laughs> moron. Well, Neil's got a got a job to do. We'll see if he he stays the course towards the end. Uh, don't know. Don't know what's going to happen to him. I mean, he is the face of science, and I know why he's doing what he's doing. Uh, but he could be he could be a real turning point in this. You know, he could be the hero. I, I know people are going to say, "Oh, how 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 could you? We should lynch him." You know, we, we should, you know, we should take him into town square and flog him. Uh, no, no, because he has the potential because he is the face of science, mostly because he has entertainment value. You know, he's not, he's not, I, I'm sure that uh, a lot of physicists out in his world hate him secretly because he is not in the top 100 physicists in the world. He is absolutely the most popular, but there are plenty of people that have published stuff that have been meaningful. I don't even know what he published or has he been published or if uh, it doesn't matter, but he has a chance to think of it this way. If he just came out and said he could turn this in such a great direction and say two words, two words, and, and he could end this, uh, which is uh, the, the short version would be, I'm sorry. Uh, that would be it, and and just go from there. And it's like, look, I'm sorry we lied. It was for your own good. We were told to. You could make up any story you wanted, but if you start with the apology, you know how your parents would be like, well, if you tell me now, the punishment won't be as severe. But if I find out later, you know, then it'll be. That's what it'd be like. Just come clean. This everything's starting to break down anyway. NASA's becoming a joke. I mean, you, did you see that thing? Um, again, I'll talk about this on Monday. Uh, did you see that thing where Scott Kelly quit? You know, the the, the astronaut who, who broke a record, the American astronaut that broke a record in space, he had, wasn't even home a week, and he said, yeah, I'm quitting NASA. And he quits. What are you talking about? He, he didn't even buy, you know, that, there, there's a book tour and a lecture tour. Talk, you go here around do talk shows. He was set, and he quits? Why? Why, why would you do that right after? I mean, the, the, the paint isn't even dry on, on a memorial for it. Oh, uh, it's just, it is, they're, they're doing, they're making moves now that are ridiculous. And uh, Scott Kelly quitting is just yet another example. You know, that and shutting down the ISS and, you know, the Mars mission. It's never going to happen. The moon yeah, mission. I got, I got somebody who went and uh, tried doing a text about Tyson, but I can't see it because you got to remember I'm on I'm on this computer that is this big. Oh, it is so tiny. I mean, got it's it. like a laptop, but it's like a um, I don't even it's a mini laptop, and it's like I can't see anything on the on the right. I can't move the screen over. Got it. I don't get that. Don't well, no worries. We can we can go for a little bit longer. Then, unfortunately, I've got to. Uh, uh, I just got my banner for the. Uh, well, let's talk about this real quick. Uh, you know, there's a new. We're, we're we're reaching a new stage now, and there's going to be a dedicated flat Earth network. That's going to happen, and uh, it's already in the works right now. The the sites being built, the the people are being recruited, and uh, it's it's going to happen. Patricia and I are going to headline it. And so Flat Earth and the Hot Potato Show, which we normally do, we, we're going to be doing It's a daily show. So we're going to be doing it Monday through Thursday for uh, between two and three hours a day. And uh, other people will be on the network and it'll be, it'll be really, really fantastic. But the, f the fact that we're talking about a flat earth network you know it's it's gotten exactly. and, and by the way people that that look and, and i know there's videos out there showing you know that the spike that you know the, the big spike that happened a couple months ago is, is starting to go down you gotta remember that's just the mainstream saturation uh chart which means at one point when there was a rap battle between a grammy nominated rapper and neil degrasse tyson one of the weirdest sentences you'll ever hear in your lifetime uh, when that happened, media saturation hit 100%, meaning 
if you had a media publication, you were covering that story. Everybody from Time Magazine to M NPR to MTV to Vanity Fair was call you know was covering this thing. Um, and once it ended, that you know we're gonna we're gonna fall off until the next person talks about it, and then it's gonna spike again. So it's not a big deal. But in the meantime, everything's going according to plan. Uh, when you type in flat Earth into YouTube right now, uh, not only did we break. Remember, I predicted uh, at the end of last year that we would hit, uh, because uh, what towards what October of last year, we were only like 2.8 million, something like that, maybe pushing three. I said we'd hit, by the end of 2016, we'd hit 5 million hits. And as of this morning, we're at 5.6 million hits, and it's March. It's the beginning of March. So who knows where this thing's going, but the 100th monkey effect is is already, is already in play. That's, that's in yeah, it's amazing when I when I heard that five million. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and when you type in, and that's just if you, I mean, yeah, and so and and people say, well, you know, that's not very specific. You should put flat Earth in quotes, right? Fine. You put in flat Earth in quotes, and you're pushing eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred thousand specifically says flat Earth, you know, right next to each other. But uh, you know, when we do, when we do without quotes, then it takes into a lot of uh, things like the Earth is flat and all the different combinations, and it's it, yeah it just keeps growing and growing and growing and there's new people that are that are joining and uh you know can't wait to see what happens with the network i mean heck i got a book <laughs> i got a book out of it i didn't even plan on buying you know writing a book you know this was this was completely unsolicited i have apps now the you know flat earth people with gr a lot of talent are creating things uh patricia has a, a flat earth and other hot potatoes app uh for both the android and the apple um uh, one of the uh, one another flat Earth person uh, created uh, the banner, which I've got to go figure out how I'm going to hang uh, a banner for behind me uh, for the uh, for the new flat Earth show, the flat Earth Daily Show, which we're going to do. There's just so many cool things that are coming out of it, uh, and not to mention, people think that oh no, it's a passing thing. It's like no, no, it's not because you don't write music about generally you don't write music about conspiracies and there's people writing flatter songs in all genres and you think i'm kidding go to my go to my channel and look up or just look up on youtube uh flat earth music playlist there's a playlist yeah, and how, many, how many do you have like 70 70 i got 73 74 songs in any genre you can think of country rap techno uh pop uh, rock, death metal, grunge. It's, I mean, there, we got double live albums now. Yeah, it, we had huge amounts of content. You don't see of who, how many, when, did, when's the last time you saw people writing songs about something like this? That, oh, I know it was the sixties. I mean, the, talk about your movements. This thing is huge. And, uh, and you, you wait till more people get involved. It's going to get crazy. Uh, you know, this, this saturation, there's more and more people talking about it openly. And what I'm loving more than anything is it feeds itself. So more people make YouTube videos, right? And so you have this content that is just getting huge, you know, huge amount of content and you get other people that are brand new. They're coming into it and they're going, what's, you know, they're looking at it for the first time and they just type in flat earth and this wall of content comes up and they're going, how have I missed this? What in the world is going on? And so then they they feel affected. They have to make their own videos. And then the whole thing starts over again. It just keeps cycling. Did you sit? Okay, you just I just got done. You know, remember I was telling you that somebody made a comment? But what yeah. they did is they threw in this video. They didn't make a comment. They just threw in this video. I didn't catch it. If you want to take a look at it, I didn't quite catch everything on it. That's okay. But, I'll, um, I'll I'll do it after we're done. Yeah, that was that was uh, sent by. Uh, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna get this correct, but um, Deborah seven seven zero. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't um, mess it up. I had, as... Yeah, I had to really figure it out. By the way, your video start. I mean, your audio started coming in crystal clear for the uh, for the last five minutes now so Weird. i don't know maybe it's just my processor is speeding up or something and now i'm catching it all i don't know i don't know off the top of my head that's okay as long as i am i'm happy about that good um 
anyway, anything else uh, that that comes to mind? I didn't want to. I didn't want to catch this too long because I know this is your first time trying to no, do this. That's on fine. The- My shows are never long, anyhow. <laughs> Was there any uh, any parting shots? Anything you you were curious about? Or uh, uh, well, yeah, I was going to ask you now that and don't take this the wrong way or nothing. Now we had did an interview quite a while ago. It was last year, um, and uh, it was just a phone interview. Um, the quality wasn't the greatest. Yeah, um, I noticed that you had posted. Um, an interview with someone else who was on the phone, and it was terrible. The audio sucked, but you yeah. put it on your page. Mine was better. I went through it, and I listened to it. I can hear you much better. <laughs> I'm just well, are you sure? Are you sure I posted it? No, it was on your. It was on your page. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Let That's me. If you do, you still have the audio for yours. You just re re listen to my or our interview because it's the very first one I've done. Okay. And um, you compare it to the two, and then you decide. All right, all right. <laughs> I'll, tell, I'll tell you what. If you send me the link to which one it is, the the and send me a link to it, I will rip the audio out of it, and uh, and I'll, I'll listen to it again. And if it if I think it's cool, I'll I'll put it up. How's that? All right. <laughs> no, no. I mean, every once in a while, like like right. second generation ones, I generally don't. Uh, but it, but I also want to hear which one you you're comparing it to, because uh, it it I well, don't. I think- do, Mark. I've got I've got the audio, uh, original audio. I can just send it to you. Yeah, send me the original that, audio. You can send yeah. a transfer file on um, on site. Okay. Okay. So that would probably work for you. Okay. Then you can deal whatever you want. I tried to boost it in certain areas and let me and uh, let me let happy. me take a look. Let me take a look and I'll uh, yeah sure why not. I'm actually curious okay. to see how this one. I'm curious to see how this one will turn out. Yeah. Now now you're gonna have to change all your other videos. And, oh shoot! Now this was interview. Uh, oh no 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 no! Because I get them. I put them in. I put them in the order that I process them in. So, like the uh, like the Jimmy Church. Jimmy Church was a perfect example. He he. It took him sixty days before he even posted it on YouTube. And I I requested that thing the audio a long time ago. And so no no I don't reorder anything. It's just whenever I put it up. Sometimes I'll back data, but I will put the date that it happened. So you have to remind me the date that it happened. Yeah. Right. I got you. So. That's cool. Um, anyhow, um, anything new that's coming up down the pipeline that you want to share with anybody? Uh, I'm trying to do, let's see if you responded real quick. I am trying to do a consultant engineer. You know, I've been doing testimony shows and uh, I'm trying to get one. Let's see if this is the same guy. He's a fire engineering consultant for a big construction company. And he's got some insight on buildings and um, how they're built and the curvature. And I thought he would be an interesting guy to, to talk to. So I'm working on him. And he actually does have some insights that I'd never thought about, but I'm not going to give them away here. Because uh, I've got I've to gotta nail him down first. But he actually might come on the air. I can't promise that he'll be on for Tuesday's show. Might be another mailbag. But I've had a pretty good track record. It's been testimony, mailbag, testimony, mailbag, testimony, mailbag. Uh, but this one uh, would be another great testimony if I can get them. I've already done 13. I don't know how many more I'm going to need to do before I'd let, you know, I'd love to say I could stop once I got the first NASA guy to come out. But then, you know, once a NASA guy comes out, then it's, then we're at a whole new level. So we'll see. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I did uh, the other day, um, because I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but, you know, I'm a bus rider, so I ride the bus everywhere. And I go down to Minneapolis-St. Paul uh, Airport. That's Mm -hmm. where I pick up a bus. I hop a light rail from my house and go down there. And late at night, I was coming home and waiting for a bus. Uh, There was uh, one of the uh, uh, captains of... You know, I'm not going to mention the airline, but it's pretty pre- prestigious. 
And uh, we got to talking, and I asked them straight out about the uh, uh, GBS versus the uh, gyros, and uh, which you use the most. And he was very um, not for coming, I would say. He just kind of like, yeah, well, we kind of sort of use GPS, but you know, and I, and I was like just waiting to to rip into him, but I just thought, no, I'll, I'll just be nice and. And then I happened to mention the bit with the flat plane and, and that when you uh, start to go to um, uh, flight school, which I actually did in the 80s, um, yep. <clears throat> I don't have the brain for the map, and that's why I dropped out. But nowhere in the manual does it, it – I mean, it's, it's, it does tell you in the beginning that to treat it like a flat plane. Yeah. And it's like that was one of the keys that he kind of raised his eyebrow about. It started. You could tell – he was starting to think about it. So I went and I gave him your flat earth clues and Mark Sargent. He'd love to do an interview with you. Uh, you can go on anonymous, anonymously. And, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, I'll take a look at it. So you may or may not get a call from a guy All from right. Minnesota. Cool. Who, so I'm hoping that he does, but I'm not going to hold your breath. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have, I'm, I'm down with that. If he wants to do it, sure, be happy to do it. Yeah, probably not. Well, anyhow, I guess that's uh, pretty much about it. I don't really have too many other questions that you haven't already answered on previous shows. But, um, hey, keep it flat, man, and uh, keep going with what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm, I'm glad you got this thing up and running, and uh, hopefully it turns out right, and hopefully you do more stuff in the future. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to try to get as many flat earthers on. I want to get a hold of Dave, David Weiss. So, matter of fact, you can you are in more contact with these people than I am. But David Weiss, um, uh, gosh, I can't even remember the guy just earlier that you talked to. Um, Rob Skiba, Skiba. Yeah. Rob Skiba, and obviously Patricia Steers. I had already sent out to her, but I haven't heard word back from her. But I would yeah. still like to do some interviews with those people as well. Okay. So just pass it on if you happen to, you know, any I will, normal conversation. I will do so. So, all right. Well, thank you so much, Mark, for being here. Uh, I appreciate it. And keep, keep it flat, dude. All right. Thanks, man. See you soon.